What uh, advice would you give to a young person today in high school and college that dreams of doing something big like Jan LeCun, like let's talk in the space of intelligence, dreams of having a chance to solve some fundamental problem in space of intelligence, both for their career and just in life, being somebody who was a part of creating something special? So try to get interested by big questions. Things like, you know, what is intelligence? Uh, what is the universe made of? What's life all about? Things like that. Um, like even like crazy big questions, like uh, what's time? Like nobody knows what time is. Um, and uh, and then learn basic things, like basic methods, either from math, from physics, or from engineering. Uh, things that have a long shelf life, um, like if you have a choice between like, you know, learning, uh, you know, mobile programming on iPhone or quantum mechanics, take quantum mechanics. Um, because you're going to learn things that you have no idea exist. It, and it, you may not, you, nev you, ne you may never be a quantum physicist, but you will learn about path integrals and path integrals are used uh, everywhere. It's the same formula that you use for, you know, Bayesian integration and stuff like that. So the uh, ideas, the little ideas within quantum mechanics or with, within some of these kind of more solidified fields will have a longer shelf life. They, you'll somehow yeah. use indirectly in, right. in, in your work. Learn classical mechanics, like you learn about Lagrangians, for example, mm -hmm. um, which is like a, a huge, hugely useful concept, you know, for all kinds of different things. Uh, learn uh, statistical physics because uh, all the math that comes out of, you know, for machine learning uh, basically comes out of, uh, was figured out by statistical physicists in the, you know, late 19th, early 20th century, mm -hmm. right? So, um, and for some of them, actually more recently for by people like, like Giorgio Parisi, who just got the Nobel Prize for the replica method, among other things. Um, it's used for a lot of different things. Uh, you know, variational inference, uh, that math comes from statistical physics. Um, so, um, so a lot of those kind of, you know, basic courses, you know, you'll, you'll, if you do electrical engineering, you take signal processing, you'll, you'll learn about Fourier transforms. Mm -hmm. Again, something super useful. It's at the basis of things like graph neural nets, which is a, an entirely new, sub area of you know AI machine learning deep learning which I think is super promising for all kinds of applications um, something very promising if you're more interested in applications is the applications of uh, AI machine learning and deep learning to science or to science that can help solve big problems in the world I've, I have colleagues at uh, at meta at fair who started this project called open catalyst and it's um, it's an open project collaborative and the idea is to use uh, deep learning to help design uh, new chemical compounds or materials that would facilitate the separation of hydrogen from oxygen. If you can efficiently separate oxygen from hydrogen with electricity, you, s you solve climate change. It's as simple as that. Because um, you, you cover you know, some random desert with uh, solar panels uh, and you have, a, have them work all day, produce hydrogen, and then you ship the hydrogen wherever it's needed. You don't need anything else. Um, you know, you, you, you have controllable power that's, you know, can be transported, uh, anywhere. So if we, if we have a large scale, efficient, uh, energy storage technology, like producing hydrogen, uh, we, we solve climate change. Here's another way to solve climate change is, uh, figuring out how to make fusion work. Now, the problem with fusion is that you make a super hot plasma and the plasma is unstable and you can't control it. Maybe with deep learning, you can find controllers that will stabilize plasma and make, you know, practical fusion reactors. I mean, that's very speculative, but, you know, it's worth trying because, yeah. um, you know, it, uh, the payoff is huge. There is a group at Google working on this, uh, led by John Platt. So control, uh, convert as many problems in science and physics and biology and chemistry into a, into a learnable problem and see if a machine can learn it. Right. I mean, there's properties of, uh, you know, complex materials that we don't understand from first principle, for example. Right. So, you know, if we could design uh, new, um, you know, new materials, uh, we could make more efficient batteries. You know, we could make uh, maybe faster electronics. We could, I mean, there's a lot of things we can imagine 
uh, doing or you know lighter uh, materials for for cars or airplanes or things like that. Maybe better fuel cells. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff we can imagine. If we had good fuel cells, hydrogen fuel cells, uh, we could use them to power airplanes, and you know, uh, transportation wouldn't be uh, or or cars, and we wouldn't have a emission problem, uh, CO two emission problems for for uh, air transportation anymore. So. There's, there's a lot of those things I think where AI you know can be used it uh, and and this is not even talking about all the sort of medicine biology and and everything like that right you know like you know, protein folding you know figuring out like how could you design a protein that it sticks to another protein at a particular site because that's how you design drugs in the end mm -hmm. um, so you know deep learning would be useful for all of this and those are kind of you know would be sort of enormous progress if we could uh, use it for that. Here's an example. If you take, um, this is like from recent material physics, you take a, a monoatomic layer of uh, graphene, right? So it's just carbon on an hexagonal mesh and then you make this single single atom thick. Mm -hmm. You put another one on top, you twist them by some magic number of degrees, three degrees or something. It becomes superconductor. <laughs> Nobody has any idea why. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I want to know how that was discovered, but that's the kind of thing that machine learning can actually discover these well, kinds of things. Maybe not, but but there is uh, a hint, perhaps, that with machine learning we could train a system to basically be a phenomenological model of uh, some complex emergent phenomenon, which you know, superconductivity is one of those, mm -hmm. uh, where you know, think th this collective phenomenon is too difficult to describe from first principles with the current you know. The usual sort of re, you know reductionist type method, but we could have uh, deep learning systems that predict the properties of a system from a description of it uh, after being trained with sufficiently uh, many uh, samples. Um, this, um, this guy Pascal Foua at EPFL, he has a startup company um, that where he, he basically trained a, a, a convolutional net essentially to predict the aerodynamic properties of solids. And you can generate as much data as you want by just running uh, computational free dynamics, right? So you give a, like a, a wing airfoil or something shape of some kind, and you run computational free dynamics, you get as a result the drag and you know uh, lift and all that stuff, right? And you can you can generate lots of data, train a neural net to make those predictions, and now what you have is a differentiable model of let's say drag and, and lift as a function of the shape of that solid. And so you can do by gradient descent, you can optimize the shape so you get the properties you want. Um, yeah, that's incredible. That's incredible. And on top of all that, probably you should read a little bit of literature and a little bit of history for inspiration and for wisdom. Because after all, all of these technologies will have to work in the human world. Yes. And the human world is complicated. It is, sadly. Jan, this is... Um, an amazing conversation. I'm really honored that you would talk with me today. Thank you for all the amazing work you're doing at FAIR, at Meta, and thank you for being so passionate after all these years about everything that's going on. You're, you're a beacon of hope for the machine learning community. And thank you so much for spending your valuable time with me today. That was uh, awesome. Thanks for having me on. That was, it was a pleasure.